All right, hello and welcome. My headphones are not working today, so I will be extra reliant on uh, the wife over on the side here to let me know if you can hear everything. Um, so let me get settled in here. Oh, got a thumbs up. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Uh, Fractals posted up all the information about the flight. Uh, I see a couple people at the end of the runway here. Flip back into the cockpit. It's plane. Okay. So we are in beautiful Alaska, excuse me. And while people get settled in here, I want to do a little bit of information about the stream. So each week we pick a new national park to explore together. This week we're exploring Denali National Park, uh, which Nylens or Sudbarian, I still don't really know how to pronounce your username, um, worked at for a little bit. So feel free to throw fun facts in the chat um, as we go along. That's, that's always encouraged. Uh, for those of you with a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I've uploaded the flight plan today for you to follow along. Fractals posted that just a minute ago in the, in the chat. I've also researched the park in preparation and added any new information with sources to the National Park Wiki page. Why Wikipedia? So there's two main reasons. One, it's to make sure the facts here are checked by others. And two, to give back to a living body of knowledge uh, that goes beyond our hour here together. So to that end, if you notice anything incorrect or that could be better clarified, um, please go and update the Wiki pages. As the Wiki community often says, be bold and make the updates. Also, we'll vote near the end uh, what national park we want to go to next. So look out for that in the chat, as well as other polls and uh, questions. If you have ideas or thoughts that pop up or flying around, feel free to post them. I love I love chatting about that kind of stuff. A small disclaimer. Uh, yes, I am a pilot, but we'll be taking full advantage of the simulator today. Uh, so please don't try any of this at home. Uh, without further ado, I'm Jules Altus, and I'll be your pilot for this evening. So sit back, relax, and let's explore Denali National Park. With that, let's say we get our star uh, takeoff roll here. So we're in a very big kind of backcountry uh, plane today. So we can get rolling here. All right. Uh, so this is a Cessna uh, 208B Grand Caravan. So this is a classic. If you, if and when you go to Alaska, if you decide to take a a flight out there, especially if it's kind of a backcountry adventure, you you may end up in this exact plane. It's a pretty common one to go and see there. It climbs really, really well, uh, which is good for this park because it, uh, Denali, the mountain in the park, is uh, 20,000 feet high and uh, the tallest one in the United States. So we'll talk quite a bit about the mountain and you'll see it in, up close in the game. A couple administrative updates while I get myself flying here. The uh, uh, Fractals and I have been bouncing around a couple of ideas on new polling solutions. Uh, some of you are already aware that the polling approach we've been using, it's worked okay, this straw poll approach, but we're going to try something new today uh, just to see if it if that's a better, better approach for it. Um, we'll see how that goes. We're trying it out for the first poll, and if, uh, if all goes well, we'll switch over to that completely, and if not, then we'll keep looking around. So I'll look for that. It, it, Hopefully a self-explanatory, but in our trial runs, it was kind of hit or miss, which is never good. Uh, the other thing I'll mention real quick, I added uh, info about the autopilot settings. Let me know if that's useful. I can actually include that in the flight plans or anything else. Um, ever since I think it was Flying Singer mentioned that he prefers to do autopilot when he does trips like this, I started doing more of that, and it's actually really, really relaxing. Um, so I'll put the flight on and just let it fly itself for the hour long while I'm kind of prepping other things in the background. Uh, so if that's if that's useful piece of information, uh, do let me know, and, and I include that in the future. Speaking of which, let me get... Oh, <laughs> Miss Fractals, I was born in... Oh, okay, uh, Nyland says he was born in Sudbury. Okay, got it. So it's no official way to pronounce Siberian. I like that, though, Siberian. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's okay fractals i already explained that we're trying new polling uh, fractals posted the link to the poll instead by accident so that won't that won't take you anywhere um all right okay so what i'm going to do here real quick is get myself set up for autopilot and hopefully that just takes me away here so uh, flip over to nav mode and then i'm going to set my altitude to be uh, the height of Mount Denali, which is uh, actually we're going to pass not over Mount Denali because it'll take us the entire time just climbing up that high. And so instead, we're actually going to go up to 12,000 feet, which should get us just over the ridge around Denali. OK, 
Okay, good. And then I will switch over to vertical speed mode and raise this. So what this is telling the plane is to climb at 300 feet every minute and follow the uh, flight plan that I've filed, which you can see in the iPad here where I'm going, and then uh, continue, just continue climbing at 300 feet as you go. We'll enable that. All right, we'll see how that works. Okay, I see Siberian and uh, Flying Singer off in the distance. Hi there. I think I might be a little bit above you too. Oh, I need to set my altitude. Okay. Great. Speaking of getting settled in. Um, so fractals, any luck with that poll? I can, uh, so the first poll here is just the kind of classic, have you been to the park before? So the answers are yes in the last 10 years, yes once upon a time, and not yet. And I will load this page up to fractals and see, all right, I'm going to hit the start poll button and see what happens. <laughs> okay, that doesn't appear to have posted anything. Um, so to vote on these ones, if you type in to the chat um, exclamation point vote recently, this should just post these all up. All right, fractals, we might need to go to plan B. You post uh, into the chat something like either recently or distantly or not yet, then it will come up for yes in the last 10 years, yes once upon a time, or not yet. So like that sort of thing. What do you think, fractals? All right, well, we'll leave it running. Uh, it, does, it doesn't appear to be registering any of the results. So we're going to pivot. Yeah, it's not showing any of the polls. OK. Sounds good. So we'll we'll try this again next week. Um, the other polls are all based on the old system, so hopefully that that holds up for today. Let me pop out here. We can look around the beautiful Alaska landscape. Oh, Flying Singer is way above us. It's the climb rate on this plane. OK, so uh, Fractals, why don't we do the other poll approach? And we can let people just do it that way instead. Uh, while Fractals is getting that up, so the, the most useful thing to start with, I think, is a picture of what uh, Mount McKinley or Mount Denali um, looks like. We'll talk a little bit about the names in a second. So this is the mountain itself. Thank you, Fractals. Okay, so Fractals posted up that poll. Oh, you know what? Uh, fractals, I had to, because they both use the same command, I had to remove one. Oof. Okay, that's fine. Technical difficulties as we try to switch around these. Um, I got rid of the bot. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, fractals. Uh, okay, so this is <laughs> this is Mount Denali, um, or Mount McKinley is is another name you may hear for it. The name of the highest mountain in North America became the subject of dispute in 1975 when the Alaska Legislature asked the U.S. federal government to rename the officially named Mount McKinley to Denali, which is the local name for it. It was unofficially named Mount McKinley in 1896 by a gold prospector and then officially named by the federal government of the United States in 1917 to commemorate William McKinley, the president. Uh, there was a number of attempts in 1975 to get the federal government to change the name, and that wasn't getting any traction. So 1975 through 2015, when uh, the Obama administration finally decided to uh, push it through that it would become an official federal name change. Uh, and so the Secretary of the Interior at the time announced the name would be officially changed in all federal documents to Denali. So McKinley is now outdated. I actually have it as McKinley in the flight plan because they have it as McKinley in the park map that I have, uh, which I need to go back and update after this uh, stream. I'll go and change that name. This is the official one now. Right now we are flying over Primrose Ridge. Let me show a photo real quick of what this looks like. So this is Savage River, Primrose Ridge. This is as far as you can drive into the park um, without getting a tour bus to take you around. So that's kind of what it looks like, roughly, area.
All right. So uh, I mentioned that I don't have my headphones today, so it will be a little hard for me to to make sure the volume's good. So let me know in the chat if uh, anything needs to be adjusted. But while we're flying around here, we've got a little bit of a haul. Chat, okay. <laughs> I read the cue card. Oh, uh, Neil Enns, you hiked to the top of Primrose Ridge, this one? That's cool. <laughs> no, no, no. Siberian, that's awesome. Uh, please keep posting them. That, the park seems like a, a wonderful place to spend time. Um, so Siberian saying that he hiked up to the ridges here uh, when he was here. Oh, it's, and he's saying it's an easy hike too. So that's good. That's my kind of hike. Actually, I like a difficult hike from time to time. I did a little Pacific Crest Trail a while ago. Okay, so naming all taken care of. The purpose of the park is to protect uh, intact the global significant Denali ecosystems, including their cultural, aesthetic, and wilderness values, and ensure opportunities for inspiration, education, research, recreation, and subsistence for this and future generations. I'm going to pull up a video from the park. It's a little bit less uh, friendly ranger entertainment, a little bit more kind of you know, the spirit of Denali, um, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun video. Uh, look for the sharp mountainous terrains. You're not going to see as much of how sharp it is in the game. So this is a good thing to watch out for. And then the different types of activities or adventures you can have in Denali. And uh, Siberian can, can reimagine all of these things that he, he may have done. Okay, I'm getting a signal from uh, the wife that you can't hear anything. Is it that you can't hear anything, anything? Okay, uh, that's too bad. Well, the good news is it's mostly scenes in the background, but that's not as much fun. Uh, well, just a moment. Let me see if I can figure out a good solution here. I suspect what has happened is whatever messed up my headphones probably messed up anything else up too. Let me see if I can um, finick with one more dial. Mm -hmm. Nothing like live debugging, right? I don't know how it's doing that. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, um, I can try one other thing and just see if it works. It's a little bit of a risk of a an echo block, or it may just go. Um, uh, it may be very very uh, echoey back and forth, but I can give it a try and just see. Yeah, it'll be fun. In any plot, it could be man versus nature or man versus man. What we're doing, it's more like man with nature or man versus himself. I want to see what I can do, what I'm capable of. I feel like you have to have an explorer spirit in order to really appreciate this place. You really have to be adventurous and really ready to take on anything. Yeah, it'll be fun. You do have that feeling like you're discovering this landscape. What's up this pass? What kind of view do I get from the top of this mountain? Yeah. 
Denali sometimes sets a really high bar. When the bar is set high, I like reaching it. That first trip was one of the biggest adventures that I've ever had. It's so exciting to know that you're about to start this awesome journey. I'm about to begin something that will probably change me in some way, will be really hard in some way, and will also be really fun in some way. I really enjoy feeling small and swallowed up, and part of that experience is that exploration and diving into a place, into the unknown. Why does McKinley tempt the world's top mountaineers? Hemmed in by the increasing complexities of civilization, we all feel a special joy in coming face to face with the best that nature has to offer. I think having mystery and surprise in your life is pretty special. The waterfall coming down over there. Uh -huh. And out there, it's unavoidable. It's kind of what keeps driving most of us. We're headed up onto the traverse tomorrow. We're all pretty excited, a little bit nervous. There's 4,000 foot wall upon 4,000 foot wall things that make the walls in Yosemite look small. Update is we're at the summit of the Sugar Tooth. Psyched about that, but um, definitely a humbling day. When you are stripped of everything except basic elements of survival, it's insane what you can push yourself to do and who you become because of that. Getting really close. You feel alive. Everything is activated. Nature is a powerful force. Something that's that big of a deal, like it can change you. We were trying to get over this pass and it was just whiteout conditions. We were caught out in a storm that totally just pinned us to the ground. And then the wind is whipping over the top of the ridge. That was the most difficult day I have had. Wow, I can't believe I did that. I feel really good about that. That's my favorite kind of trip, is when it is challenging. Feeling capable of meeting that challenge, that's a very satisfying thing. That is what Denali is about. It forces you to come face to face with the thing that's scary or the thing that you're uncomfortable with and makes you overcome it. There's nothing better in the world than that. That's how you know what you're made of. The same things that can break you down can lift you up. Nice job. You know, those things, they help you grow and they shape who you are and I think they make you who you are. It's a totally different feeling and people who want to appreciate it can come here and appreciate it. And if we take that away, there's nowhere left for them to go. You can almost imagine zooming out from that spot and there's all this space and then there's you, that little speck down there and it's like, wow, like me, little me, this little speck, like I can still make my way in this world. I could do this forever. Pretty cool, right? Let me catch up on the chat. Wow, Sidverian, that the okay. So, so Sidverian's pointing out uh, something which is which is pretty cool here. So, if you look down, if you look at the map on the iPad, you'll notice that there's just one road that goes through this whole park, and only the buses can drive on it. So, it's a a ton of wilderness that you can go and hike anywhere you want to. 
Um, but if you want to drive in, then you only have a, only that one option, which is really cool. And, and Severian saying that he was on a hike once in the park solo and looked to the right and saw and found himself completely surrounded by a herd of caribou. <laughs> and then just chilled and walked together for a long time. That does sound like a, a really, really cool memory. That's the kind of stuff uh, people talk about. There's a lot of videos actually from Denali, um, kind of like the one we just watched. That was actually an assembly from a lot of different videos. Um, and a lot of the videos had those kind of just incredible stories of, of interacting with nature and, and getting to be out there. Um, so that's really cool. It's really cool. And then uh, Siberian saying that the rivers you see here are all relatively shallow with just muddy and due to the, the silt, um, easier to cross than most of the Alaska rivers. And then not a lot of fish in them. Oh, and uh, last thing that, that Severian is saying, the Denali grizzly bears are everywhere, and you see them on a daily basis. Um, but they're smaller than the other Alaska grizzlies, less fish. Very interesting. I didn't. It, there was conversations in some of the um, blogs, is I guess the best word, about how frequently you see wildlife. I didn't realize it was also grizzlies. I thought it was all, um, uh, well, doll sheep and, and caribou and stuff. So cool. Uh, thanks for the fun facts. That's awesome. Yeah, bet man with swing girl. This is it is beautiful, right? So there's uh, Denali off in the distance there. Oops, I've covered it up with the map. We'll fly right towards it in just a minute here. And then behind us, there's a couple of different uh, ridges that we pass. Let me pull up a, a photo real quick. There's the um, oh uh, fractals. Uh, since you can't read my mind, I think I did all of those steps with the poles, and it was theoretically working last night. Um, but uh, famous last words, I suppose. So uh, we won't worry about it. We'll just wing it. Okay, so this is the Polychrome Mountains, which we just flew over a little bit, and they have this incredible set of colors that you can go and see, um, especially from the air. It's really pretty. Or if you hike up to the top. And then I'm not exactly sure where in the park this is, but there's a ton of really cool um, pictures of what it looks like in the fall with the colors changing. And so I tried to grab a representative one, but there's every part of the park looks like it's just gorgeous through the winter. A really cool place to go visit. And then the last one is this view we just had a moment ago as we were flying over the road. Uh, that's called the Stony o Overlook. And so you get this shot of, of Denali that's really hard to hard to forget, um, to be honest. And then that's that, that road that um, Siberian mentioned that goes through the park. Okay, let me flip this. Okay. Um... So we're on our way to Wonder Lake. I'll pull up a photo of that when we get a little bit closer. But uh, let's start off with a quick uh, person of the week. And this week we're going to talk about Walter Harper. So Walter Harper was the first person to summit Denali. Uh, and the Denali, and the, excuse me, the Walter Harper uh, Telkitna Ranger Station is named after him. So this is what he looks like. It was, I think he was 20 when he summited it. Uh, or maybe he was 25, uh, but relatively young. He was an Alaska native mountain climber and guide, and on Saturday, the 7th of June in 1913, he was the first person to reach the summit of Denali, Mount McKinley. And he was followed by other members of an expedition team, the small group that he went with, a couple of guides, an uh, Episcopal uh, Archdeacon, uh, Hudson Stuck, uh, who also married him and his wife later, and then uh, and a couple of other, an another missionary from, from that same uh, group. So kind of a, a cool character for the, the park. We talked about McKinley in a past park. That would have been the other uh, the other person of the week choice. But uh, we already already talked about that. All right, so we don't have access to the polls today, but I will uh, read the poll options, and you can think through which one you would have picked, and then we can all giggle together at the silly options. Um, OK, so the first topic for today is sled dogs. And uh, you may have noticed in the, the video of the park, they had a couple of scenes where there was a sled dog team going around and, and doing things. Talk a little bit about sled dogs in the park and why, uh, why they're an important piece of it. Uh, but Sudberian mentioned actually in the Discord that he used to walk the uh, a dog or dogs once a day. I couldn't, I couldn't tell if it was the whole group or if it was just a, a couple of them, but that's really cool. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about Denali sled dogs. So the question for today is, what is the Iditarod? And is it... Oh, just one dog per employee, Severian says. Okay, cool. What was the, did, did the dog have a name? Was this like one that you got to spend all summer with then? Uh, okay, so what is the Iditarod? Is it an annual sled dog race in Alaska? 
Is it a reminder of a sled dog relay that was set up between the villages of uh, Ninana and Nome to transport serum for a diphtheria outbreak? Or was it both of these? And in this case, uh, the Iditarod is both of those two things. We'll talk a little bit about Iditarod in a minute. They, yeah, I, I don't know why I asked if they have some names. <laughs> As I was going through it, so so my my um, I try to jot down things to remember to like interact with the chat and stuff. And one of the things I was going to ask about is: Has anyone seen or got to ride with the sled dog team before? Um, and uh, when Sidberian mentioned in the Discord that he like got to work with a dog all summer long, it was like, well, that's really cool. Um, we I would be curious: Has anyone else got to go out and do? Uh, like go on a sled dog ride or um, interact with them or anything like that. Um, post uh, any stories in the chat. I think that's really fun. I know um, when I was younger, we got to uh, help raise a a sled dog for a little while. So it was going up to the North Pole for an expedition uh, and they wanted to socialize them a little bit. So when we were kids, they brought the dog uh, to live with us for some number of months uh, and and kind of helped help the dog learn how to interact with humans. I think I got a baseball card with this picture at some point. So it was a pretty fun experience. Okay. So Sidberian saying is, is walking them is amazing. You're only really walking them in theory. Uh, they're so muscular, one little jog by them and you'll be dragged wherever they go. Uh, fortunately, they're very polite. Yeah, I've heard that the sled dogs are, are very well, well trained um, and very strong. Okay, so down here is Wonder Lake. For those of you in the Discord, uh, you may remember Siberian mentioned that he uh, had had. Uh, I, I don't know if you've been to, to Wonder Lake or if this is just a place that's um, that's common in the park. But apparently, the mosquitoes are uh, horrendous here, so we get the benefit of being in a, a flight sim to experience it. But let me pull up a photo real quick so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> okay, so Siberian says he's been there. And no idea why people stay there. Yeah, they stay there for this view. I mean, this is something. And it's also at the end of the the bus line. So if you want to go anywhere by bus, this is the place you're going. Okay. A oh, flying singer, you are way up there already. Oh, and Siberian. Okay, well, I'm the slowpoke, I guess. That's fine. So okay. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so Siberian saying that the view is great, but the mosquitoes are insane, um, which is, I believe that, especially with just standing water in an area with no other standing water. Or maybe lots of standing water. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so sled dogs. <laughs> what is a sled dog? So a sled dog is a dog trained and used to pull a rig and harness, most commonly a sled over snow. So... If you've never seen a sled dog team, this is sort of what it looks like. There was a couple of them in the in the video that we just watched. And then if you see it, this is the view from inside the sleigh. And so it's kind of these two lines of dogs in the U.S. at least. Sled dogs have been used in the, in the Arctic for over 2,000 years and were important transportation in the Arctic areas until the introduction of semi-trailer trucks, um, snowmobiles, and airplanes in the 20th century. Um, before then, hauling supplies into areas uh, was impossible by other methods and so sled dogs were a really big part of, of transporting things they were used to vary with various success in the explorations of both poles as well as during the alaskan gold rush uh, sled dog teams delivered rural mail to communities in alaska uh, and they're still used by some uh, communities especially in kind of a recreational sense and so you may have uh, racing events that you go to like the iditarod is one or the yukon quest is another uh, famous one that you may have heard of let me pull up, we'll watch like 30 seconds of this video. This is what it's like to ride with a sled dog team. big thing to, to look for in that video is the, the power behind the dogs. Um, that was the same thing Siberian was talking about, that they really 
kind of pull you when you're walking them. They're incredibly muscular dogs and really built for this sort of activity. And they love doing it, which is the other part of, of being a sled dog. Uh, so we talked a little bit about sled dogs. We talked about uh, the Alaska Gold Rush and how it's used for transportation then. I want to talk a little bit more about recreational mushing, which is uh, mushing would be running a sled dog team. Uh, specifically the Iditarod, which you may encounter, especially if you're from the United States. So the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is an annual long-distance sled dog race run by a uh, run starting on the first, sorry, the morning of the first Saturday in March. Morning of the first Saturday in March would be last weekend, right? And so, uh, sure enough, the, I'm sorry, not last weekend, the weekend before, and the race takes about uh, eight to 15 days. And so we are actually in the middle of this year's I did a rod right now. Uh, the first 22 finishers have completed the race. They finished in about seven days. Seven days, 14 hours was the best record. Um, and the other, I think there's 14 more racers still actively right now in Alaska um, mushing across the state. Uh, so kind of an exciting time in the world of sled dogs. The mushers themselves bring a team of 14 dogs and they must have at least five on the tow line when they cross. So the Iditarod is a race. To understand what it is, you need to know a little bit more about how it started. And this is where that poll question came from. So in 1925, a massive diphtheria outbreak crippled Nome, Alaska. There was no serum in Nome to treat the people infected by the disease. There was serum in Ninana, though, a town, but it was more than 600 miles away and it was inaccessible except by, sled, except by sled dog. So they set up a sled dog relay between the villages of Ninana and Nome, and 20 teams worked together to transport the serum to Nome. The serum reached Nome in six days. That story and the transportation of the serum in, in that outbreak uh, was the inspiration for and kind of the way of setting the journey for the Iditarod. Let me see if I can pull up. This is the route. So now it starts in Anchorage, so it's a slightly different route than before, but it starts in Anchorage and then it goes all the way up to Nome. So I mean, that's much of the state of Alaska. Okay, there's uh, Denali off to our right there and some of the glaciers. For those of you who are here for uh, Kenai Fjords, you'll recognize some of that same glacier patterns. We still haven't really done a topic on glaciers. We'll save that for another week still, um, but it's very cool to see of the immense scale of these things. Pop in and look out the window. Oh, uh, Fractals is saying there's an Iditarod qualifier race that starts and ends in uh, Marquette, uh, Michigan, and that he and his wife are going to go, but they closed it to the public because of COVID. That would be a cool, a cool event to go and watch, actually. Yeah, I hope I hope you get to make it eventually. All right, so speaking of the Iditarod, how does a sled dog team work? This is sort of what it looks like as they're running, and you can see that the racing sled dogs wear individual harnesses uh, to which tug lines are snapped and then pulled from a loop near the root of the tail. So they're kind of harnessed in and then attached to this uh, on this tug line. That then connects to a central gang line, which goes all the way back to the sled, and that's what they're pulling against. Uh, it's unusual to see more than 22 dogs in a uh, sled dog line. You could, um, but typically it's only in the most uh, competitive sports would you have that kind of that kind of limit, or that kind of uh, amount. A quick fun fact about them: in Greenland, the dogs will pull out in a sled. Uh, I'm sorry, in a fan shape in front. So you saw all of our pictures so far were straight line, two dogs by two dogs. Uh, in Greenland, though, they pull it out in more of a pan shape. Okay. I'll pop out here real quick. The other thing to know about sled dog teams is that the different dogs play different roles across the team. So there's the dog in front would be the lead dog. And so this is the uh, dog that follows the musher's commands and finds and follows the trail and then sets the pace. This particular dog, the one in the very front, is, is crucial, and so the mushers take particularly like, good care of them. The swing dogs follow the lead dogs. They make sure that the corners and um, turns are well handled. 
And then the wheel dogs in the very back have to be the strongest because they have to pull the sled out of the snow. And then every other dog in the middle is the team dog and they're kind of the muscle behind the rest of it. This is the different, different parts if you're gonna assemble your own sled dog team. <laughs> uh, Sailor Guy, 6824, that's pretty funny. Uh, it says, uh, as they say, if you ain't the lead dog, the scenery never changes. That's funny. Sounds like something. Uh, I don't know where you'd hear that, but but it's pretty funny. Of course, at the point that you're the Denali staff and you're raising a team of sled dogs, and then you find yourself coming upon the holiday season and you have to decide what to do for your holiday card, you get awesome options like this. Hi, I'm Jen Raffaelli. Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here in Denali National Park with Tatum Cope. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here in Denali National Park with Tatum Carpet. <laughs> well, they've extracted all of the cookies. Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here with Tatum Carpet, Coven, and Cash. Up here in Denali National Park, we'd all like to... <laughs> Tuck me in quick, they're in good positions. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here with Tatum Carpe, Coven, and Cash. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli. Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here with Tatum Carpe, Coven, and Cash. All of us here would like to wish you a very happy holiday from Denali National Park and preserve one of your 400 national parks across the country. Yes. Adorable, right? I, I got to spend most of the week researching puppies, actually, which was a pretty wonderful way to spend, spend time researching. I won't go into it a, a ton right now, but if you have any interest in it, they do have a lot of videos about what it's like to raise the different sled dogs. That group that we just looked at, they have another Christmas card the following year that shows them uh, a year older and they're actually on the sled dog uh, trail. Actually, here, I'll tell you what, I'll just play that real quick. You can kind of see them. So this is one year's difference. Hi, I'm Ranger Jen Raffaelli here in Denali National Park with Tatum Carpet. <laughs> Gotta have your one-year-old pulling a sleigh. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. New Blados, Trace, I don't understand the quote. Oh, Siberian saying that they're super cute and that they all had their own dog house out in the cold and they loved it. Uh, which I've also heard that they uh, sled dogs love just being out in the cold all, all the time. When we had a sled dog, uh, where I was growing up, it was snowy and it would just stay outside all the time. It's like sub-zero temperatures. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I just said new, new blood of Trace says they've extracted all the cookies. Oh, yes. Okay, that's funny. Yes, yes, yes. I remember. I This is, I don't have my headphones, so I, yeah. Cute. <laughs> Um, all right, so we are passing now on the other side of uh, Denali, and we're coming down what was called Ruth Glacier and the Great Gorge. So this is Ruth Glacier right up here. Let me pull up a picture of this real quick. So that's what that looks like in the real world. Right. So in summary, sled dogs are a wonderful part of Na Denali National Park. A new litter is bred and trained each year and have and they have been since the start of the park. A sled dog team has lead dogs or a lead dog might be singular, swing dogs, team dogs and wheel dogs. The Iditarod is one of a handful of famous sled dog races. Now, my wife has been talking about getting a puppy for several months now. 
And it wouldn't be smart for us to get a husky where we live. As you may recall, I prefer 85 and sunny, and that is not a husky's preferred environment. But uh, I would love to get a dependable smart dog like a husky. A uh, Sudbarian, the experience you're talking about, right up my alley. So <laughs> puppies have been a topic in our house for a little while now. Um, and while I was researching and watching all these videos about puppies, I... I thought it was so interesting and there's a video i can post it to the discord afterward about how they test for which puppies will be the best sled dogs in the end so they run a series of different tests about the shape of the body the uh, reaction to unknown env uh, environments the reaction to um, to things that you might encounter on the trail as a sled dog and one of the tests they do is they take a string and they kind of dangle it in front of the puppy and see what it does and you can see some of the puppies are unfazed and so they would make a good sled dog and you can see some of the puppies will get scared of the of the string and they'll run back and hide in the corner and and i remember and i was watching this uh, a couple days ago and i'm sitting there like oh that's so cute like this little puppy is scared of the string and you know he wouldn't make a good sled dog or whatever and then last night i was getting ready for bed and we had the lights off already and i stepped on a loose phone cord on the ground and i yelped <laughs> and i jumped like five feet in the air uh, and so maybe it's good that my wife didn't know about how they vet for constitution for good um, sled dogs before she married me, because uh, that sort of reaction to a phone cord wouldn't cut it on the sled dog team. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so that's that's sled dogs. The the second topic for today is uh, is <laughs> sorry, I'm giggling at myself. Okay, let me catch up on the chat. Recenter my chi, get my my ginkgo energy back. Oh wow. Okay, so Siberian so saying that uh, one fun fact about Denali, the peak, uh, is it's one of the more accessible high great peaks of the world to climb. There's only one to two fatalities per year. That's really cool. Actually, I didn't know that. Uh, I know it's right up there with like the list of the greatest mountains in the world. It it, it makes the top of all, or not the top, but it's like right up there with with Mount Everest and some of the others. Um, so that's that's cool. I know that they they scouted out a bunch of different routes, and there's kind of a common one that people take nowadays. So. <laughs> Fractals. Fractal says no pull to dip, no pull to bail you out of that terrible joke. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I'll read the poll out loud anyway. Actually, Fractals, do you mind posting it? Just maybe the, the text so people can read it. Um, and even though they uh, can't vote, if people want to post which one they think it is, that's awesome. Otherwise, I'll just uh, I'll run through it and, and we can talk about it. Ooh, I like Denali better with 50 centimeters of snow, says Flying Singer. All right. I will say I did a little bit of back and forth on the weather. Because we did Crater Lake with snow so recently, I went with no snow. But let's throw it on there just for the fun. Get that nice uh, Alaska look going. Yeah, <laughs> flying singer godlike powers in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know. You can add your, your waves or your weather. All right, so Fractal's posted the poll. What are a new, uh, a new lie? Is it a currency in Harry Potter? Is it a nickname for a New Year's resolution you know you're not going to keep? and you lie or is it a pattern of stated uh, start and stop rings that you'd find on doll sheep's horns uh, or ring shaped objects generally and you lie new photos trace says harry potter good guess good guess uh we will come back to that a little bit later when we get to that part of uh, doll sheep which is our first topic here so connection to the park uh, this is one of the more famous animals you're likely to see when you go visit. Charles Sheldon was the American conservationist and called the father of Denali National Park. And he came out in the region in 1906 to hunt and to study the doll sheep. He was also the one who had the idea for making the national park, which is why they call him the father of Denali National Park. In fact, doll sheep were so well known for the park that in 2012, the U.S. Mint released their 15th America the Beautiful Quarter. And on the reverse of it, they have uh, Denali Mountain in the background and then a doll sheep in the foreground. So if you're flipping through your coins and come across Alaska, you may see yourself a doll sheep right there. Okay, so what is a doll sheep? 
you may recognize them. This is a picture of a ram and a picture of an ewe. It's a more northern subspecies of thin horned sheep. The sheep are native to the northwestern North America. So this is the kind of range that you would see them over, relatively specific. We talked about the horns. So uh, male doll sheep have thick curling horns. Females have shorter, more slender, and slightly curved horns. The uh, until the age of three years old, males and female uh, doll sheep appear pretty similar. Beyond that, though, the male's horns will continue growing, and then it's really easy to tell them apart. Um, the other thing that happens is the, the horns on the, the doll sheep will grow mostly in spring, summer, and then early fall, and then they'll stop through the winter. And because of that, you get this start and stop kind of growth pattern that looks like rings called uh, annuli. And you can use those annuli to kind of help determine age. So this is sort of, if you look at the horns on that sheep, you can see kind of what the annuli looks like over here. Now, I, I started counting these and quickly realized that, uh, so doll sheep live to be up to about 12 years old, like 19 would be the oldest uh, you ever found. The uh, So there's not 12 rings on here, so it must be a little bit harder to read it, but you can use it at least to get a, a sense of the age of the sheep. The rams do clash horns, but it's done to establish an order in the group. It's not to uh, uh, fight for the ewes. And so these clashes will occur throughout the year on an occasional basis, but it'll be most common when all of the rams come together for uh, uh, just before the rut, and they'll encounter unfamiliar rams of similar horn size, and then they want to establish who's the, who's the dominant ram. And so that's when you'll get your clashes mostly. Flip back in here. Oh, okay, it's prettier from the outside. We'll just do it like that. Uh, so they do clash horns occasionally. I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find an actual video or a photo of a doll sheep, but uh, this is a, a wildebeest doing the same sort of thing. They're both bovines, similar kind of behavior. So you've probably seen this in in a media or picture. There's no on those lines. Ooh. Okay, Sudbarian's saying if, uh, if anyone does travel to Denali, there's a princess resort in the area if you have the budget. Uh, he says he was a broke college student, so didn't make, uh, didn't even walk in there, uh, but it looked amazing. That's cool. Is that inside the park or is it kind of at the headquarters area? Uh, okay, so let me show. Uh, lambs are born in May, so the males and females get together. They they don't associate throughout most of the year, and then they get together in late November and early December. And then the lambs are born in May. This is a picture of the doll uh, sheep lambs, who are adorable. So we have puppies and lambs today. Uh, honestly, it's a, it's a treat for everyone involved. As for food, during the summer, when food is abundant, they'll eat a variety of different kinds of plants. In the winter, it's much more limited in options, as you can tell from this frozen tundra in our video game here. And so they'll kind of eat whatever they can get, frozen grass, um, sedge stems. Uh, when the snow blows off, they'll eat uh, lichen, which you might remember from Mount Rainier, uh, as well as moss. And they'll also go and visit mineral licks during the spring and will travel uh, many miles to eat the soil around the licks. So they want to get um, the minerals that they can from that soil. For predators, the primary predator of uh, doll sheeps are wolf, uh, wolf packs, coyotes, black bears, grizzly bears. Uh, golden eagles will also prey on their young, so technically gold, golden eagles are on that list as well. Um, a lot of those animals I listed as predators are also the other famous animals to go and see in Denali. Uh, so lots of, of big game around there. They mentioned, I don't know if they mentioned it in the video we just watched, but they mentioned some of the other National Park videos that it's odd to be in a place where you are n not the top of the food chain and very much not the top of the food chain. Uh, and Denali is one of those one of those parks for sure. So they have all these different predators. What are their defenses then? The doll sheep have been known to butt gray wolves off of cliffs. So you take your horns and push a coyote or sorry, push a wolf right off. Pretty effective. The other thing that they'll do is they typically stay in relatively dry country and try to stay near this kind of special combination of open alpine ridges, meadows, and steep slopes uh, with extremely rugged ground in the immediate vicinity. And this allows them to quickly escape from predators if, um, if they need to, because the predators can't travel quickly through such terrain. 
so sort of being selective about where you are to make sure that you can quickly uh, quickly escape if you need to. So in summary, doll sheep are a classic animal to see in Denali. The rams grow horns throughout their life, uh, while the ewes stop growing horns around three years old. They're preyed upon by wolf packs, coyotes, and bears, although, and, and uh, although in defense they can uh, push wolves off of cliffs if they need to. So they have a lot of prey. Typically they just escape, but they can push a wolf off if they need to. Uh, Sidberian says the Denali Park is proud that there has been only one human fatality from a bear attack in its history due to aggressive training of humans and park regulations for bear interactions. Huh. Cool. Um, the, yeah, I, when I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, we didn't do very much of it, but we had the bear canisters and, and the whole bit. Um, and pretty rigorous training, although what you're describing sounds a lot more uh, more involved. That's good for them. Um, <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. I'm gonna I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> Crazy Tycho uh, says the bears are just really good at hiding bodies. <laughs> nice. Um, what I should do is employ Crazy Tycho to write the jokes for these. Mm -hmm. yeah, I should follow up on that. Okay. Anyway. Um, so yeah. So that's that's doll sheep kind of in a, a short version of them. I also mentioned that doll sheep will stay close to a particular set of environments so that they can rapidly jump away from incoming danger. And I would recommend a very similar approach to this group. So consider, for instance, if you live in an area with earthquakes, they recommend that you know where you're going to go if an earthquake occurs. So you should just kind of have a, a plan in case of emergency. And I think the same idea applies for tricky questions coming from your spouse. So, for instance, if your spouse comes in with a difficult question you don't have an answer to, do you have a plan? Well, after learning about doll sheep, here's what you can do. So take a look around your environment. Tricky question comes in. What do you need? You need time. You need time to figure out your answer to the tricky question. And so you need to have a diversion ready on hand at any moment, just in case. So for me, I've got the garbage disposal in the kitchen, I've got a fan in the bathroom, I've got an unreasonably loud music box in the living room, just in case. You know, you get the picture. Gotta stay light on your feet. It's important for your survival. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, the other one, uh, uh, Fractals, you want to post up the poll, and we will do it uh, just in, um, in the chat for voting for the next park. And then Fractals, if you can keep tally, that would be wonderful. Thank you. And while people are voting on where we want to go next, uh, I'll do a little sign off here. So today we talked about Denali National Park, beautiful Denali, uh, Mount Denali, and uh, the rest of the area. We talked about sled dogs and sled dog teams, and mushing. We talked about doll sheep, a little bit about how they, how they live and work. The fractals will post up a couple of links here with surveys to the chat, uh, links to the Discord if you want to come hang out, uh, and uh, Twitter, which is a nice way to just get notifications about uh, upcoming flights and where we're going. All right. And the poll question here is, what park are we exploring together next time? Do we want to go to Mammoth Cave, Wind Cave, or Carlsbad Caverns? And if you're thinking, a cave, but isn't this an outdoor flight sim? What are you going to do? That's a great question. And if you tune in next week, you can find out. Um, I have, I have some ideas I'm, I'm excited about, but, uh, but it will definitely be a little more outdoor version of a cave exploration. We'll make it work. It'll be fun. I'll give people just a second here to vote. Fractals, when you want to tally it up, let me know. Uh, where am I? Oh yeah. So Fractals posted, um, uh, survey for, or a, a link to a survey as well. I always appreciate the, the input on those. I think that's all. All right, I'm seeing three for Mammoth. Of course, Fractal's vote counts for negative one, so I don't know what to tell you about that. All right, why don't we do Mammoth next week then? 
So with that, uh, I'm very excited to explore Mammoth National Park. Uh, it'll be a hoot. And uh, yeah, so thank you for being my co-pilot today. And until we meet again, stay curious and keep on exploring. And I will see you all next week.